ओम सत्यम परम धीम 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 Surrender. 
surrender. Surrender. Yeah, but what would it imply? Surrender is the right word, but what would it imply? I don't know. Helplessness. <laughs> Helplessness. Right. There must be a total feeling of helplessness. Like there is a feeling of love, like there is a feeling of affection, there is a feeling of helplessness. And this is the first feeling that should come to a student who is walking on the path. Till this feeling, till we feel we can do something in life. not related to what we are asking. Please understand, this has nothing to do for what we are asking. There must be a total feeling of helplessness that I cannot do. I cannot do. We have to come to this conclusion that that is why Gurdjieff used the word man is a machine. He said, man is a machine. But the machine hasn't got a soul. But the man has got a soul. That's the man. Yes, that was his way of telling something, saying something. And he was a very harsh master, very strict master. Yeah, so. but even so, hmm? Krishna, he even comes to the one who has totally lost. He said, he, 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 he. If there is a feeling of? Helpless. Right? Huh? One day Krishna was having dinner with his queen Rukmani. And suddenly he left the food and he ran to the door. And then when he was at the door, he suddenly stopped and he came back. So Rukmani asked him that, why did you run to the door suddenly as if there was some great urgency? And then you stopped over there and you back. So he says, one of my devotees was passing through a village and everybody started throwing stones at him. Right. And so I ran to the door. I said, maybe I'll be able to help him. But by the time I reached the door, he had already picked up one stone. <laughs> So, a total feeling of helplessness. So, we have to realize our mechanicalness. That we are a machine. Only then will we realize that we are totally helpless. And when that feeling of helplessness comes, there is a certain connection. A certain connection made. But as long as I feel I can do anything in life, that feeling of helplessness cannot Come. There must be a feeling of helplessness. And that is the first step on the path. First step on the path. Because in spite of all our efforts, what we do on the path, we come to a state where everything comes to us through grace. And that is a kind of, what do you call it? When you see, when I'm talking to you, I'm saying you do this, you do that, you do this, right? And I know that by doing nothing is going to come. But still I keep on saying, please do this, please do that, please wake up at this time, please do these exercises, please do that. Right? But it, that's, when, after doing, when we reach that state of non-doing, that state of helplessness, it is in that which the grace comes. But if we feel we are going to get it without doing it. Now let's take another side of this. If anything can be achieved by effort, then if I pray for it, it is wrong. Can you understand what I am trying to say? I say I want a lot of money, but 
that money, if I can gain through my own personal effort, then it's a waste of time praying for that money. It's useless. Right. So, helplessness means that it cannot come through any personal effort of mine. Because when we are asking for something which we can have achieved through effort, gain through effort, then we are asking free of charge. Then it is not grace, it is laziness. Laziness, that is not a prayer. So, there can be personal prayer because my guru is going to talk a little bit about personal prayer. But I don't talk about personal prayer. <laughs> there can be personal prayer, right? But only through a feeling of helplessness. Okay. Now, we talk about the four states of consciousness. The first state of consciousness is sleep. Nindra, sleep. All of us sleep one third of our lives. <coughs> All the dreams we get in the night are a part of sleep. Don't take them as the next state which is called as Swatma, dream state. They have nothing to do with that dream state. So all the dreams which we get at night are a part of sleep. <coughs> this is the what Patanjali calls the quiescent state of the vruttis. There is no presence. And it's a beautiful sutra which Patanjali says. Abhava pratye alambana vrutti nindra. There is no bhav, there is no presence. There is no presence. Abhav. There is absence. And that absence hypnotizes us. That absence, now no outside event is hypnotizing me. Nobody has thrown a stone by insulting me or saying something to me. I am not, uh, I'm not in the middle of traffic trying to cross the road, but I have to be aware of it. There is nothing happening outside the senses. Not, there is no feedback coming to the brain from the senses, no data coming from the senses. There is no presence. Huh? There is no presence and in that we are hypnotized by that emptiness and we fall asleep. It is a state of identification with identification. And in the sleep we have grief. personal prayer there is a state of helplessness so and a feeling under under depression This is not depression. Right? <coughs> 
तो अंदर वार आपने जे रिक्वेस्ट करिए जे रो आपने रिस्पॉन्स मे जो सरखी रीते मंदिर प्रार्थना करू इट्स वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम यूजलेस कारण पुरुषार्थी मैंने नव घर मिली सके मेहनत मनुष्य चार स्थिति स्वप्न dream it is the dream state in this state there is no i which is looking at this state there is an absence of an i looking at this state there is no observing i inside if i may from this state go into a even worse state when i'm daydreaming about the future or i'm brooding about something which has happened in the past then i'm not even in the present moment in the fact but even if i am in the present moment i may be hypnotized by the event something is, is there in front of me i'm hypnotized by it there is no i which is trying to separate from everything that is happening and trying to watch it so even though this we all say we are conscious people we are not in a dream actually this is the so called waking state which we call as clear consciousness is not clear consciousness it is the psychological state of sleep psychological sleep this is the second state normal man experiences only these two states in his life nindra and swapna sleep and dream he doesn't experience anything more in his life he is born and he dies in these two states maybe sometimes he takes a drug or something and he has an experience of the fourth state but he has gone to that fourth state without passing through the third state it's useless it's totally useless so sometimes he takes a chemical drug or something of that so sometimes he goes to a guru who knows how to give him certain energy he gives him a glimpse of that fourth state but he can't use that fourth state because he has not gone through the third state and the third state cannot be given by the guru it can only come through work on self the guru can give you the fourth state temporarily if he knows how to give it for a few moments maybe for a day for maybe two days maximum three days he can open up something where you are in the final highest state of consciousness but again if you don't come back and start working for it from the third state it can never be your own and <clears throat> with this life through gurus i have seen uh, if the guru keeps on giving that state then we become addicted to going to the guru for getting that state hmm. and i have seen this happening and there would be what we call as energy darshan where he puts the hand thumb over here 
suddenly you enter into that state as if you had a chemical drug, right? And after about 24 hours, it goes away and then you're waiting for your next turn and may come after a few months, who knows, right? So then the next few months you're spending uh, in the tomorrow waiting for that state when your next turn. And it, unless it dawns on the disciple that he has to work himself to that state. But there are sometimes some ways where you can get a glimpse, maybe listening to some music, maybe sometimes doing a kirtan. You get a glimpse, but the kirtan is not the solution. Again, without work on self, you cannot go back to that state, right? And it is when you see the, the top musicians, the very good musicians, they experience that state sometimes when the ego dissolves, when they are singing at some moment it dissolves and they experience that state, but it does not change their normal lives. They still have the same ego, the same anger, the same jealousy, nothing changes in their personal lives because they have not go, they have not gone into that state through the right way it has to come through personal effort there is no bypass पहली स्थिति आपने जो ही लियो निंद्रा, बीजी सिद्ध स्थिति स्वप्न, जिन्हें आपने अत्यारे जागृति करिए ची, जिन्हें अंदर आपने अत्यारे वाचित करिए ची, जिन्हें अंदर दिवस नहीं बद्दी कार्य आपने करिए ची, ये हकीकत है स्वप्न की स्थिति ची, कारण के कोई ऑब्जर्विंग आय कहीं छुट्टू न थी पहलो जे आ स्वप्न थी जागी गयो छे आपरी अंदर एवो कोई पण जगिया नथी जे हर क्षणे आ स्वप्न ने जोयो इतले आ जे स्थिति मा आपरे जीवीये छे ए स्वप्न नी स्थिति छे घणी बार तो ए स्वप्न थी ए नीचे आपरे उतरिये छे जारे आपरे डे ड्रीमिंग इतले दीवा स्वप्न जोयिये छे अने ब्रूडिंग इतले कारणा बताइए सुखवाय भागोड़ भागोड़ी है जी तो पची आपने इवन प्रेजेंट मोमेंट में है प्रेजेंट मोमेंट थी आपने ऊपर उठी सकी है जी कोई वक्त है पर ए जे चौथी स्थिति नहीं आपने अनुभूति था है जी ए शर्म भंगूर कोई आपने ड्रग ले दो तो अनुभूति थई जसे कोई गुरु ए शक्ति पात कहे रू तो अनुभूति थई जसे कोई संगीत रू सूर मा डूबी गया अनुभूति थई गई कदाच अंदर कहीं कविता जागी गए अनुभूति थई गई कोई आपने आर्टिस्टिक पेंटिंग बना गए चे ने कहीं स्थिति बनी गई तो अनुभूति थई गई पर ये स्थिति आपनी नहीं कारण के ये जो चौथी स्थिति तो फोर्थ स्टेट ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस अपन जे जे नो एक चमकारो मरी जाए चे ये थर्ड स्टेट में थी पसार थे ही नहीं थी बढ़ रहा पर इतने आप बद्दी वस्तुओं कोई काम नहीं नहीं ये गुरु आपे तो ये सु काम नो कारण के आपने पुरुषार्थी ये वस्तु नहीं बढ़ रही अने थर्ड स्टेट ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस जे त्रिजी स्थिति चे ये आपन ने कोई आप ही सकतु नथी ये आपना पुरुषार्थ सिवाय शक्य है वो मेरा तो भी पढ़ेगी इतने मारा गुरु घड़ी बार मने कहता कि आप बधाई जो आवी रहते जो मफत मा मड़ी सकतु हो तो आप मेहनत करवा लो सुफाई हम्म सुफाई it is not possible. इने आपने अपना भी सकता कदा जब कहीं कीर्तन करिए तो कीर्तन ही अंदर कोई क्षण है आपने डूबी गया तो इनी अनुभूति थाई चे पर इनी अनुभूति थाई चे पर मारा जीवन में कोई रूपांतरण नहीं आवा रहे कीर्तन में कारण के ये रूपांतरण तो त्यारे जाओ से जारे थर्ड स्टेट माँ की वो फोर्थ स्टेट माँ जाए 
इट हैज टू गो दैट वे तो आज सेकंड स्टेट ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस जेनी अंदर आप जीवे स्वप्न कहवा हर क्षण हर घटना की आप हिप्नोटाइज जीवन हर क्षण एक घटनाओं की हार माला पांच इंद्रिओ अंदर आए अपने छतरी ने अपनी जागृति ने खेची जाए लक्षण है नेगेटिव इमोशन कारण के आप हिप्नोटाइज हो तो नेगेटिव इमोशन आपने जीवन न कारण न देखात हो तो गुस्सो आके बाकी आई सके नहीं आंध्रा मणस ने गुस्सो आए जो आँख खुली गई हो तो कोई शक्यता जी के फरी गुस्सो आके धृतराष्ट्र ने जैसे हजी जो मार जीवन में जो गुस्सो हो तो हजी आँख उगड़ी नहीं हूँ स्वप्न मार छु धर्म गुरु कारण के आ वस्तु साथ टकी न सके मैं गुस्सो आए जीवन गहस्य देखाता हो जीवन पाचड़ कारण देखात हो तो कोई शक्यता कोई गुस्सो आ सके इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल देट्स दी एंड आई नो वॉट इज बिहाइंड लाइफ आई नो द कॉज इज अई गॉट एंग्री हाउ केन आई गेट एंग्री ऑट आई केन ओनली गेट एंग्री इफ आई डोट नो द कॉज आई ओनली सी दी इफेक्ट This is not controlling anger. This is understanding. There is no control. You understood the laws of life. You understood why he got angry. How can you get angry? How can you react? I can understand the instinctive center has to uh, what do you call save the body. I can understand that you are in a situation <coughs> of danger. but that's about it but still we get irritated still we get jealous still we are complaining about the small things in life then we don't know the laws of life then that state has not opened because there you see the truth in that state and if i've seen the truth i cannot get angry over here these two things cannot happen then they come out with all this nonsense he is getting angry for the disciple The height of nonsense. The height of nonsense. Can you see what is going on in the world? So the second state of consciousness, the dream state. Sadharan manushya a base thiti maino jivan khalas thi jaye. Ena ki agar ei jato, right? Have consciousness ni trichi sthiti. The third state of that is the state of self consciousness man has been given this gift of self consciousness does he use it or does he waste it if he wastes it then that gift which has been given to him which is not with any other animal or plant in nature he is wasting it come <coughs> what does this gift of self consciousness mean what does it mean what does it mean this gift of self consciousness what does it mean the gift of self consciousness to react or not to react yeah if an animal is drinking if an animal is drinking water it it is drinking water but a man has a choice he can drink the water and be aware of himself at the same time 
No, an animal is totally drinking the water. It is not aware of the I inside. <coughs> this is man's gift. Of course, I'm drinking water watching the match. <laughs> right? Where does the question of self-consciousness come? So this gift of self-consciousness is something which he has to work upon for himself. Sure. It is individual. It is not necessary for life to continue. I can live my life without self-consciousness. It is not necessary to live. To pay my bills, I don't need self-consciousness. To get my degree in college, I don't need self-consciousness. To earn lots of money, I don't need self-consciousness. To become very famous, I don't need self-consciousness. It can all be done in the dream in which you and me are. There's no need of self-consciousness. So, as far as normal life is concerned, self-consciousness is a luxury. Is a luxury. Right. It has nothing to do with my normal life. It has nothing to do with how many books I have read, how much I have studied, how good a person I am, how bad a person I am. Please understand this because the Shastras are full of examples where very good Brahmins had to go to butchers to learn what was consciousness. And in the Mahabharata there is this beautiful example where this very learned Brahmin is meditating under the tree and uh, when he's meditating a bird drops some <coughs> droppings on him and he looks up with anger at the bird and the bird burns and dies. I have so much power and then he goes for his afternoon meal into the town and he asks for bhiksha at one home and the lady of the home she comes and says I'm giving you something and then she goes away and she forgets <coughs> and her, her husband has come so she first feeds him and the lady must have been something she must have risen through the third state of consciousness to the fourth state of consciousness and when she comes back she remembers the brahmin is waiting and she goes in and the brahmin by then he's so angry and she looks at his eyes he says i'm not a bird that you look at me that way i'll burn into ashes <laughs> says, then you teach me the knowledge, the Brahmin is asking this housewife. And she says, you go to my guru. And he goes and the guru is a butcher. Every day he's slaughtering animals. And he can't believe it, a butcher is of low caste. And the Brahmin going to the butcher to learn. And he stays with him for three months. As he observes this, he observes the butcher that how he is cutting, he is not just cutting, there is something totally detached which is watching when he is cutting. It, is, it looks like he is cutting the animals but it is a work of poetry. And he realizes that this butcher is just playing his role in life, like he has the role of a butcher, he is playing that role. But there is something in him which has woken up from the dream, which knows it is just a role which I am playing. We forget we are playing a role. We live in the business of self-forgetting. That is why Gurujev gave the name self-remember. He learns. So, this second state of consciousness is a dream. When we move into our subconscious and unconscious and we learn the science of many is that the I in our guest house is changing every moment. I meet him, it is a different I. 
when i meet somebody on the road it is a different eye i go to the store and i'm having a desire it is a different eye now just imagine i come in the temple and pray it is a different eye now tomorrow i come in the temple and pray but some other desire is in my mind that i which was praying yesterday is not the same eye <laughs> We are going to go into this this doctrine of many eyes. It's not the same person unless there is an observing eye which is looking at this all the time. Every time it is the same eye, then we can pray because the one which came in the temple yesterday is the same one which came in today. An observing eye, but we don't have one eye. Every moment somebody else owns the guest house. and we don't even know and the look at nature's this thing it has all these thousands of people living in us they have only one mouth to speak so we think every time it is the same person they all speaking through the same telephone right and we get a name when we are born so all of them have the same name so we think it is and this is the imagination which we live in none of us sitting over here feel that a crowd is sitting over here all of us think that one person is sitting here while in reality all of us are crowd sitting over here. we have to understand that understand to move in who is in charge of the guest house just now what is he doing what are his desires why has he come right how can we pray in this state we cannot pray in this state there is no one person inside we are we live in the illusion that it is one person so this is the state of swapna the state of psychological sleep the next state is the state of self consciousness I'm drinking the water that I'm trying to hold observing I I'm eating my food I'm trying to hold observing I I'm not changing my lifestyle in any way I do the same things but now something at the back I I'm, I'm trying to observe and for that the first step is to divide my attention division of attention to practice division of attention so that one arrow of attention is on life one arrow who is watching life it starts from there don't think this is not bhakti or anything life is radha the one who is watching is krishna this is the journey of radha krishna this is the real journey of radha krishna the real ras of radha krishna. every moment radhe krishna i'm drinking the water radha somebody is enjoying inside krishna every moment and this journey goes deeper and deeper because initially there is no i inside no i inside Initially I can only see my reaction to life so I look at him he comes in as an event I say oh he is my friend I see my reaction to him I don't have a feeling of the one who is seeing it is so dim I can't hold that feeling but at least I know I know inside that oh uh, he came to meet me friend he came to meet me enemy he came to meet me jealousy he came to meet me irritation suddenly i know that this in this guest house all this is changing every moment this telephone came happy this telephone came sad <coughs> can you see the changing and and in that i'm trying to see okay the telephone came from outside the sadness came from inside radhe krishna this is the journey of radhe krishna and then suddenly you will go one more step with him you will say that he came from outside the irritation came but what was the cause of the irritation the irritation will become radha the cause will become krishna still the observing eye is not there <coughs> and 
the cause lies deep within. And one day you will see the cause and you will see that there is something observing that cause again rather we go step by step by step from a gross level to a more subtle level to a more subtle level. This journey will continue in everything we do in life. It is not something you go in the temple and do for five minutes. This is the third state of consciousness. Step by step we rise in the third state of consciousness. As we hold our double arrow, attention. It is a long journey, a very long journey. Because you, even after observing, you are holding, observing, I will keep on slipping away. That is why one of the names of Krishna is Achyutta, the one who cannot slip. The one who cannot slip, but we slip all the time. Then one day it may come that he doesn't slip for a long time. Then we are, we reach somewhere. We reach somewhere. Then there will be an inner glimpse of what the real Krishna means. But we keep on slipping. How are we going to have a glimpse of that Krishna? Then we reach that state of objective consciousness. But the beauty of the third state is that immediately we start moving in the third state, something from the fourth state descends. We cannot rise into the fourth state. The fourth state comes down as grace to meet our level of the third state. So even if I start practicing this very moment, even for those few fractions of a second that I am holding my state of self-consciousness, for that much also the fourth state will come to me too. No. The prayer has started. Mm -hmm. The prayer has started. In this second state of consciousness where you and I are, we cannot pray because in a dream, how can you pray? Swapnama supratna kars. Swapnamati jago to prarthana thaya. In that state we cannot pray. But the minute we start practicing and we are holding this double arrow attention, the gift of self-consciousness, then in whatever small manner that fourth state will come to meet us. Every moment it will start talking to us. Every moment. There will be a change of will. There will be a change of will. As we hold this state, we will see that our personal will is now dissolving. I had a desire for this in life. I had a desire for this in life. I had a des oh, so many desires. And all these desires are my small will. I will this. I will that. And can you, can that will have any quality, any, can it have any substance that will assume that will fragmented into so many desires, I want a new shirt tomorrow, I want this tomorrow, I want to see the latest James Bond movie, etc, etc. Can that will have any substance? It is my personal will for fulfillment of my desires in life. No, no suffering should come in my life. But when we are in this state of self-consciousness, the objective consciousness, the fourth state is called Turiya, the third state is called Jagruti. Self-consciousness, objective consciousness. Jagruti, Turiya. Now when we are in this state, we are trying to hold our self-consciousness in whatever manner that state comes to meet us. And there is a change of will. This is the first thing we experience is a total change of will. Give us this day our daily bread. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is the fourth state of consciousness. There his will is there. There his will is there. But the minute we 
come into the third state of consciousness, then his will descends from there on earth as it is in heaven. His will descends. It comes down. Then in life, his will takes over. Just the beginning of self-observation. Suddenly we see that the, our personal wills are going away. And the whole idea is to be free of the person. Please don't take that fourth state of consciousness that I'm sitting silently and God is coming and dancing in front of me and I'll experience this and I'll experience that. Don't think of it in all that, those ways. Please, there may be experiences. I'm not saying there won't be. But they have nothing to do with that fourth state of consciousness. They're just byproducts on the path. What is that fourth state of consciousness? Turiya, what is that state? Which descends as we become more and more deserving in this state, it keeps on coming down in deeper and deeper layers to meet us. What is that state of consciousness? <clears throat> we see the truth of life. The truth of life is revealed to us. In every event, in every feeling, in every emotion, in every thought, in every relationship, we now see the truth. But Patanjali says, Rutumbhara Tatra Tattva Pragna. Rutumbhara Tattva Pragna. Pragna means the truth. Gna, Gnyan. The gran which goes forward, the truth, pragna, the truth. Rut. Rut means the truth, sorry. Rut means the truth. Pragna means knowledge. And that knowledge goes forth. It, but it is rut thi bharelu. Rut thi bharelu. It is full of the truth. Now the knowledge which we get is full of the truth. We see the truth of life. And as our level increases in self-observation, this divided attention, that truth keeps on showering upon us much more and more. It reveals itself. And one day that we find ourselves that the whole fourth state of consciousness has come to meet us. Now there is light in the full room. Initially there was a crack in the wall and a small ray of light came from there. Oh, the whole room is full of light. Truth is everywhere. <clears throat> so, are we in a state in which we can pray? Have we reached that state to pray in? Praying starts with the third state of consciousness. Because we are asking from that state of consciousness, I want to see the truth. There is only one prayer, Om Satyam Param Dhimai. I want to see the truth. That is the only prayer there is. I want to understand the truth. I want knowledge of the truth. The feeling of truth, the seeing of truth, the knowing of truth. It come in different states. <coughs> And the knowing of truth is a big transformation. What to do? Tomorrow my son may fall ill. And if I don't know the truth, I'll be running around here, there, and I'll say, oh, I go to the temple and pray, maybe he gets better, this and that and all that. And suddenly I'm in this state of knowing of truth. And I know why he is ill. Don't think. There is just joy and pleasure and anand over there. <laughs> there is intense suffering. Intense suffering because now you know the cause behind everything and you have to still suffer it. People give such romantic ideas of spirituality. You sit in meditation and the joy will come and the pleasure will come and the bliss will come. And they don't understand that truth is the deepest suffering. 
there is joy there is anand because there is that feeling of i aham brahmasmi when it opens but you have to live your normal life and now you live your normal life seeing the truth and when you see the truth you cannot ask for anything to be changed you will never ask for anything to be changed because you know why it is like that and it cannot be otherwise that thy will be done thy will be done to live his will is very difficult to live our personal wills is okay so in the third state of consciousness is the state of self observation it begins with self observation and at one point you dissolve into the fourth state of consciousness but you don't rise there it comes down to meet you and it comes every moment it is it wants to come now also we just have to divide our attention it wants to come now. and that is why i said that whatever pujas you are doing in life don't change anything do what you are doing but now do it in a state of divided attention something will come something will come out of it whatever whatever uh, a capacity to hold that state something will come out it is not useless but should be done in the right way but that is just the beginning we have to move so far ahead so real prayer starts with self consciousness real prayer what we pray is every time there is a different i that is why they say first mohammed went to the mountain but then they say the mountain came to mohammed the fourth state came down to descend came to meet him the mountain came to mohammed first he had to make that effort to remain in that state now supposing i pray that please lead me away from temptation is it a right prayer oh now i have given everything <laughs> is it a right prayer please lead me away from temptation it is something which i have to work on for my self i cannot get it free of charge please lead me away from temptation i can say a prayer give me the consciousness to see temptation help me to see temptation the temptation i have to work on it for my self like i said if i can work for it i cannot pray for it i cannot bypass working for it and get it directly so anything from which i can make an effort don't pray for it. now can i pray for others can i pray for others and there are beautiful experiments where people are praying for others can we pray for others yes yes gujarat ke karwan hoy to bol ha pachi agar bol hoy to feel like so એટલે શું કરવાનું છે તમે લખ્યું છે ત્યાં પોઈન્ટ પોઈન્ટ કહી દો તો કરે ફીલિંગ સીઈંગ અને નોઈંગ ટ્રુથ આપણે સેકન્ડ સ્ટેટ ઓફ કોન્શિયસનેસ સુધી વાત થઈ કે એની અંદર આપણે જીવીએ છે અને ફરીએ છે સેલ્ફ કોન્શિયસનેસ સેલ્ફ કોન્શિયસનેસ સ્વ જાગૃતિ સ્વ જાગૃતિ રાધે કૃષ્ણ ની રાસ છે એનો યાત્રા છે હવે જેમ આપણે આ સ્થિત 
स्थिति में अटेन्शन ने डिवाइड करसू एम जो चौथी स्थिति है कॉन्शियनेस तुरिया कहवाये आ चार स्थिति ने गीताजी अंदर निंद्रा एट धृतराष्ट्र स्वप्न एट संजय जागृति जो प्रयास करे अर्जुन जो स्थिति माटे प्रयास करे कृष्ण तो कृष्ण ने अपने मई न सकी अपनी स्थिति बनाए तो कृष्ण अपन मे अपने लायक हो तो मैं जागृति घेराई में उतरता जासु ए प्रमाण स्थिति अपने खुलती जैसे स्थिति अंदर त्र तबके सत्य देखा से गुरु पे प्रे फॉर द डिड गुरु प्रे फॉर द डिड and what does he pray that there should be no suffering in his life or more suffering in his life dangerous <laughs> <laughs> right. so the he wants to the guru has the possibility with him is the possibility that things which could happen over many lifetimes they can be compressed and that means the suffering of many lifetimes also is <laughs> right he has that possibility he knows the laws of karma and he knows that time can be compressed and time can be extended and sometimes in some some situations just his what you call compassion and maybe somebody suffering does go away right i've seen my guru used to heal people and heal people and i was i always used to wonder what he is doing i mean none of them are going to go into a state of self consciousness right compassion compassion right? people who are 15 years and 20 years in wheelchairs you would make them get up and walk to the window and what the for what are we doing it this person is not going to this thing start working on himself he is going to go back to living a normal life of dream in the normal dream life why are you doing it why are you doing it? but he used to do it so they can they can but that does not change anything that really does not change anything how does he how does he do that can kind of make you paralyzed so that is praying for others it comes in praying for others the buddha gave three sutras buddham sharanam kachan sangham sharanam kachan dhammam sharanam so prayer also follows all three work on self work with others work for the work work for the work three lines of work
if you've moved one step on the path, you have to share it in that sense that somebody can move one step towards where you are. You just cannot keep on moving ahead. So to move that one step you work on self. But the minute you have moved one step, you look back and say, hey, can I pull somebody with me that is work with others. Work with others. Then you can move one more step. Work on self. The problem comes when there's nobody's hand to pull. There's nobody's hand to pull. Nobody wants to walk on the path. Everybody is interested in their normal dream of life. I want more money. I want more happiness. Etc. <laughs> Etc. Et it's a lovely dream of life. So there's nobody's hand to pull. Right. So then compassion comes in. Can I help a sick person? Can I help a needy person? It really doesn't mean anything, but it then you have to work with others. To work with others. Right. So then you can move the next step. To again work on self. Work with others. Work on self. When we work with others, there must be the capacity to understand the other, to become the other. Only then can I pray for the other. I'll give you one example. There was this girl, Sona. She was around 40. And she used to come to my camps. Now, she got cancer. And she, she came to me and I said, there's just one thing that life is life. And if I know I'm going to live for 70 years, I really may not, may not do any work on myself. But if I know I've got only three months to live, then all the work which was I was going to do in 70 years, I may compress it in three months. Those three months may be more than 70 years. You decide. You decide. I said, if you complain about the cancer, what is going, or if you keep on what is going to happen to your children, what is going to happen to this, then that's the end of the matter. You won't be able to do anything. It's there. And she started just doing the rhythmic breathing, holding the double arrow attention in the rhythmic breathing. She went through whatever the doctors said and she died, I think, in about six months' time. But her death was of a very different quality. What people do not are not able to do in 70 years, she did in a couple of months. Now, was that cancer a curse or was that cancer? You tell me. She woke up from the dream of life. People in 700 lifetimes don't wake up from the dream of life. She woke up. Definitely not a curse. It was not an accident that cancer. If she had gone into depression, it was an accident. But she rose above it. She used the cancer. She used the cancer. And uh, she used it as a stepping stone to consciousness. Now here, when you are working with others to understand what the other person needs, what is right for the other person? Is curing the cancer more important? Is making her comfortable more important? Is alleviating the pain more important? Or is consciousness more important? Can you see what? Today somebody was telling me, okay, when I had a job, all my exercises used to go clockwork. Right? Now, I don't have a job, everything's gone haywire. Such a simple thing. No? 
when we had the job, we had to reach there on time. Then we have to calculate from that time, so much time for my exercise, so much for this. There's, that job puts everything in our life in order. Suddenly this cancer is there. Now, what am I going to do with this life? Am I going to go for anybody's wedding? Forget it. Huh? Am I going to go for anybody's party? Forget it. Am I going to watch a movie? Forget it. Am I going to switch on the television, newspaper? Done with it. Now I want to, at the moment of death, I want to be conscious. And what do I do in the next three months when that cancer tears into me and takes away and death comes and I am sitting there and watching. What can I do about it? And what I cannot do in 70 years, maybe I'll be able to do in three months. It brings, that suddenly that brings order in my life. And consciousness and order go together. So, it's very difficult. Many years later, her husband met me somewhere and he gave me a book which he wrote on the six months she passed through the cancer and how she went through it. So, Things in life, it is within us that what comes to meet us, in which law of karma do we want to take it? Which law of karma we want to take it? If I go into depression, if I start complaining, then I have taken it under a lower, lower law of karma. I use it as a stepping stone to higher consciousness, then I am free of that law of karma. That's it. But we complain. So work on self, work with others to make them understand. To make them understand that life may be harsh. Life can be painful. Life has no guarantee to fulfill all our desires. But life can be a stepping stone if we work on ourselves to something much higher. And it is this journey of Radha Krishna. Life is Radha, the observing eye is Krishna. Radha Krishna. Right? So, work on self, work with others. Prayer for myself, I pray. What do I pray for the other person? To take away his pain? What do I pray for the other person? Right? Or show him the right way. Show him the right way. But when you relate to other people, you know. You know that this person, there is no possibility. He's not interested only. Then you say, what can I do to take away your pain? What can I do to take away your hunger? Right? Guruji, what, what do you tell a parent whose child has been shot? How do you make that pain rise above that situation? How do you... That is the thing. It's very difficult. In, Initially, you can't philosophize with the parents. You just have to sympathize with them. And in that process of sympathy, normal sympathy, which is so-called sympathy of life, whatever we do, if we see a small window open, then we can start talking the real thing. The real thing. There's also another way that you may have a knack of putting it in a better way. Uh, last year when I was here, a young boy, someone who comes to my camps, the mother, the young boy, he was drinking a lot and he died. Now the mother went into depression and now she's been coming to my camps all these years and for me it was a, that she went into depression, okay, what can we do? We just meet her sometimes and say some good words but she doesn't want to come out of the depression. You don't know where you know, because there must be some window open to help the person. Otherwise, you just sort of alleviate the suffering, say some good words or whatever. <coughs> anyway, this camp which I just had before coming here on the Narmada, and there one person had come and he said that my wife died six months ago and I can't get out of the shock and this and that and all that. 
So that was the last question, the day the camp was getting over. Now it so happened that that mother, the daughter had come for that day only in the camp. So she put her telephone near the mic. And so I was talking about suffering. Right use of suffering. Right use of suffering. Suffering happens in our life on certain occasions. Intense suffering comes in our life. Do we make right use of it or do we waste it? If we make right use of it, we extract consciousness. Because suffering is friction. We are burning in that suffering. Right? What has happened has happened according to law. Nothing happens outside law. If somebody has been shot, somebody has died by drinking, Whatever has happened has happened according to law. That law cannot be changed. Even he cannot change that law. The guru can change it. The guru can change it. Because he has some ways of changing it. Now, so I said you how to make right use. That person understood. He was a 76 year old man. And he understood and he says, you opened my eyes. Anyway, this girl took that on the phone. Now that mother for one year, I've been trying to explain to her whenever I meet her. <laughs> she never understood. This girl took this lecture home on the phone and the mother heard it. Next day she phoned me. She said, I've been wasting this suffering this whole one year, this big shock which came in my life. And your lecture has opened my eyes. Now I've been trying to personally open your <laughs> but it happens when the window is open. When the window is open, it happens. So, you see, we do not see the truth. We are so limited in the prison of our five senses. What the five senses we see is the only truth in life. We are so limited in our sensual thinking, right? We cannot go beyond into psychological thinking. And that's it. And then we suffer. Hmm? Also, uh, earlier on you said, say, so you're saying now that the Guru takes on, he can change the law. And then previously you mentioned that in the universe, if you extract one side or change something on the one side, then on the other side, there's something bound to happen. So how does the Guru do that? Because if he makes something... Like he knows certain rules where he can compress some things into some time. Supposing I give you an example of Ramzula Rebapu. He was my guru for seven years, right? So, he had, like, it was not his guru as such, but like a guru, he had a very elderly person. And very highly spiritually developed person, beautiful person. And I remember the days of, uh, what do you call, Navratri. So on the nine days of Navratri, every day that he was more than, I think he died when he was 120 years old. And he had a huge white beard and he was very tall and a beautiful person. And he had lots of followers, lots of followers. And on the Navratri days, he would wear all the clothes of Radha. And he would come when the Ras is being played, you know, and he would take all those postures of Radha and all that. It was really lovely. Now, he was in hospital. He was in hospital. Hospital in Bombay, just so hospital. Ramdurai Babu was in Madhavpur. So, he's telling me that some people in his group, they need him for six months. So, you don't disturb me. So he went into his room, right? What he did, you know, the operation was successful and he lived exactly for six months more than that. But when he opened the room, he was in terrible fever. That fever lasted for a few days. In that terrible fever, he would go into semi-coma kind of thing, shouting, you know, in that fever, the pain and all. But he came out of it. 
so some they know this law of give and take and they can work a little with it they can't manifest everything but they have a certain way of manifest it can be done it can be not for us we forget it. those gurus are gone right but it can be done and i have seen in many cases six months i have seen in many cases six months where the person should have died now, but he lives for six months. So I've seen that. I think later on, what we can talk about some other time. I don't want to go into the subject of prayer anymore. Is how to pray with the five four centers: the thinking center, emotional center, instinctive center, and uh, what do you call moving center. And another thing which we can also do is we first go into what are the three forces and how to use the three forces in our prayer. So that will be a little, we'll take it later on because this time we have so many days and there's really nothing to do with all these days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, he keeps me here for six weeks, I really don't know. Everywhere else I finish my camp in four or five days. <laughs> so, but we'll go deeper into prayer, right? I want to continue self-observation. I want to take the many eyes. So, if there's any other question, I'll take it now. But I'll stop over here. What is the difference between uh, seeing the truth and knowing the truth? Beautiful question. Did you hear the question? No. He's asking what is the difference between seeing the truth and knowing, knowing the truth. Let's take it at a very simple level. Very simple level. You insult me, I get angry. Right? Now I am living in the second state of consciousness dream state so i get angry back at you when i say that you have no right to insult me now before seeing the truth there is feeling of the truth feeling so let us start from there now we'll start from there now i'm practicing self-observation i'm in a state of divided attention i'm trying to hold an observing eye which is now looking inside looking inside so the minute i get angry that observing eye tells me wait a minute he's insulting you but the anger even before he insulted you the anger was lying within you right seeing the truth at whatever level i am can you see right before that there will be a feeling that maybe i'm getting angry on you but there's something more to this then I'll be able to see, oh, the anger was lying within me. A further stage will come of knowing the truth. If I had got angry on you, what, by sowing that seed of anger, what laws would that seed of anger go through? What would manifest out of them those laws? And where they would go, I would see the whole, the knowledge of the whole process. You get what I'm trying to say? Here I see that the anger was first lying within me. So I see the whole process. How did it come to lie within me? I know the laws behind it. And I suddenly in that one anger, in the operation of those laws, I see the laws which are behind everything in the universe. There's a knowing of laws. Everything happens according to law. I see the truth. I see I'm, I'm angry. It's not your insult. I was angry even before your insult. Hmm. Right? So I had to deal inside. Right? Then I say, okay, but what are the laws? How did that anger manifest? Where did it come from? What are the laws? Right? Supposing I had expressed that anger, then what would have happened? And suddenly the whole <coughs> knowledge comes to me. About it. So there's, I see the truth. I know the truth now. And it all goes together step by step. Now this is at a very small level. 
but this will go deeper and deeper in these three things as my own what do you call uh, state of self observation grows uh, the more and more truth will come to visit me so the basic laws will remain the same right one of the laws is the laws of the three forces which we are going to take this time the law of the three forces right okay right okay anything else yes as a novice while the green should how would we know what is the difference between living in his world and living in the world of the eye I don't get it. Okay. Earlier, you had mentioned when you spoke about the states of consciousness, hmm. right? That we all live by eyes, we have many different eyes, hmm. and you also may mention the fact that, and I think you mentioned the Christian prayer that you're living, that I will be done as it is in heaven. So how do we know when we are living in the divine world as opposed to I, my world? When my my small desire is fulfilled, <coughs> there's temporary satisfaction. You understand? So it's gross satisfaction. Yeah, it's a gross kind of satisfaction. Supposing I buy a new car. Now for six months I may have wanted a new car. So for a few days I'll be in that thrill of the new car. Maybe I'm looking around and who is looking at me? <laughs> okay. So my personal desire has been fulfilled. But Definitely, after a few months, I'm looking for a better car. Right? Then that's the end of the matter. When His will manifests through me, I'm able to put my will on the side, right? And His will comes. Then His will does just doesn't bring satisfaction. It brings joy. It brings a different kind of joy when His will comes. So when Thy will be done, right? There is immense, tremendous joy in fulfilling His will. And in that there is no personal gain in fulfilling His will. It is not like I got a new car or I got a new home or I got bought a new shirt or something of that sort. Or I saw a new movie. I'll get a new wife. <laughs> <laughs> but if if his will manifests, his if his will manifests, then you see your old wife as new every day. <laughs> she's not old; she's still young. <laughs> his will, thy will, his will is lying there in heaven, and when we come into that state. His will comes down to meet us. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It comes down. We just have to come into that state. And then we don't live, live with our personal wills and our personal desires. Every moment His will manifests to us. Every moment. And living His will is the greatest joy in life. So it's only when you reach that stage of Turiya that you will be No, you will come into that state of Jagruti. Self-awareness, self-consciousness. That state comes to meet us. We don't have to do anything about that state. As we go deeper into this state or higher into this state, that state in more and more intensity comes to meet us. That state is truth. That state is truth. Right? We so, may have to be, uh, sorry, will we have a certain <coughs> karmic balance before we get to check third state? The very the very act of self-consciousness is you're cutting your skarmic balance. The very act of self-consciousness. Because you're not planting any new seeds. Right? You insult me. If I get angry, I'm planting a new seed. But if I'm observing that anger, then the old seed is being burnt. It's as simple as that. Shall we stop away? Thank no. you. Jai Shri Krishna. Tomorrow, tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow morning, yoga at 6 o'clock. <laughs>